this video I wanted to make on uh, consciousness. Are you still recording? Still recording? Okay, so let's start. Around 1990, a physicist uh, Roger Penrose and anesthesiologist Dr. Stuart Hameroff came up with the first hypothesis for existence of non-computable consciousness. And uh, it interested me because it provides a specific mechanism for the existence of free will. Penrose, in his uh, retire and support outrageous ideas uh, state of career, but maybe it's something worth exploring. As some of us might have experienced, when humans are put under general anesthesia, it only affects conscious activities of the brains, while all non-conscious function continues to support physical processes in the body. So it's interesting how anesthesiologists job to practically turn on and off consciousness on demand. So Penrose often starts by proposing his interpretation of uh, Girdle theorem, and that's where he received a lot of criticism. Understanding of mathematics is not a computational process because we, as humans, are capable of understanding nature and phenomena in the nature that are beyond simply following of rules. How do we do it? Well, we do it by understanding. Therefore, our understanding is not computational process. So basically, once you understand something, it's a feeling. And it's like a click, or there's a term, qualia. A moment of conscious awareness feeling the world from inside your brain. So to sum up, understanding is an unknowing, is a feeling and not step-by-step -step algorithmic process. Or at least that's what Stuart Hameroff and Roger Penrose is arguing in the frame of this theory. <sighs> Let's dive into a theory itself. In 1905, Albert Einstein came up with the idea of uh, special relativity. Special relativity postulates that um, mass, any mass in the universe, curves a fundamental space-time geometry and creates a phenomenon we all know as gravity. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> So now, as you go down below the level of atom, below the level of nucleus, electron, all the way down to Planck scale, um, what is that nothingness uh, actually made of? And um, mm, it's referred as space-time geometry but we actually don't know what it is. Some people say strings, quantum gravity, quantum form, space-time metrics, spin network, a lot of names for it, but we actually don't know what it is and um, it, there's nothing verifiable and testable so far. One of example of such attempts is theory of quantum gravity, and uh, in most variation of it, the gravitational field is itself quantized. A quantization of gravity implies some sort of quantization of uh, space-time geometry, quantum space-time. So now that's where it gets tricky. We have to get in the specific property of uh, quantum mechanics, superposition. Be clear.
I don't know how to explain superposition. It says it's a scientist. Where? Well, okay. Quantum superposition is a term to describe a quantum system that exists in a multiple states. According to Orch or particles exist in a superposition, kind of like a separate ripples. Gravitationally, as particle moves, the curvature moves like a standing wave. So when one of these waves ceases to exist, collapse happens. <laughs> Penrose gives these moments of collapse a special name product consciousness or simple of occasion of conscious experiences Ooh, brain experience i need a break and breathe out feel the tension releasing from those areas next we're going to go to your neck and shoulder muscles breathe in and breathe out Okay, so biologically, Hammerup attributes these processes to one specific component of the brain cell called microtubulins. Microtubulins are dynamic and they guide the division of the cell, directing synaptic plasticity. Conclusion. To conclude, consciousness consists of self-organized ripples in the fine scale structure of the universe. These ripples undergo collapse or objective reduction and are staged into full experience of reality by our brains. So far, scientists have failed to find any experimental evidence for the theory, however, I think this is one of the strongest theoretical explanation for consciousness I have found so far. And uh, in a lot of ways, this question remains open. And uh, it's up to you if you would put your trust in this theory. provides a specific mechanism for the existence of free will, in, in some ways. Well, I thought so. <laughs> Anyways, is that a bullshit?